Hey everyone, I'm Rich. The Samsung Galaxy A54 is looking a lot like the S23, so much so that I'd call it like the S23 Junior at around half the price. There's just a lot of good things I want you all to know about this phone, and I'll point out some negatives and stuff like that in this video, so let's get right into my review. One of the first things I found when I picked up the A54 immediately was the weight. This is very noticeable as soon as I took it out of the box, coming in at 202 grams. While it may not seem like a lot to most people, I can tell you after years of testing out many phones, this is right around the mark where I would say it's on on the little heavier side. There were times that I'd be uh, laying on my bed or on a phone call with someone and after a couple minutes, I, I can feel the weight. I will say though that this phone does have the benefit of looking a lot like the flagship devices. Uh, the sides of the phone is mimicking an anodized aluminum frame. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's a little hard to tell that the volume keys and power buttons are made of plastic. Yes, you heard me right. The sides of this phone are made of plastic. Other than that, the back and front of the phone are made out of Gorilla Glass 5, which through my testing holds up pretty well against scratches and micro abrasions. Add that with the IP67 dust and water resistant rating, and I think Samsung did a terrific job here choosing to revamp the design on the A54 this year. It's not slippery in the hand. The color options here are wonderful. I was digging the lime color a little bit too much here. Uh, the bezels around the screen are fairly prominent this time, but this is to be expected on a phone at this level and price point. The fingerprint sensor is set quite low on the screen. None of these are huge geo breakers in my opinion, other than maybe um, just the weight. I have noticed the Galaxy A54 is remarkably user friendly from its size and dimensions to its tactile sensation of holding it, particularly around the seamless curve where the frame and the glass converge, which mitigates any rough edges. Its design is considerate, durability is respectable, and its appearance closely resembles uh, the S23. Just slightly bigger, uh, a little bit more clunkier, and a little bit more plastic feeling. The displays on the Galaxy A series has always been a real treat, and this year's A54 is no exception. This time it's back with a beautiful 6.4 inch 120Hz AMOLED display with a peak brightness of 1000 nits. Uh, it's not quite as bright as a whopping 1700 nits on the S23, but that's not the goal here. The goal is uh, the A54 is aimed at budgeting users, and they're honestly giving you a lot here. The price point, uh, I can't stress that enough. The HDR10 Plus Edition to the screen makes the colors and contrast on this device pop. Navigating across the UI, the web, or social media looks and feels nimble on here. Uh, video games. Video games was a blast to play on this device as well. You can game on this $450 machine. I think we're getting to a point of where smartphones are going to be able to catch up to like most modern day applications and be able to run them pretty well. Yeah, like I said, at this price point, you're without a doubt getting the best screen. It looks phenomenal, it looks immersive, it looks sharp and crisp, um, there's no better way of putting it. And yeah, the same goes for watching content on this. I mean, if you got Netflix or YouTube, anything like that, I mean, just, just look at the display, man. It's just gonna look so, so good here. Uh, one thing I do wanna touch base on um, with this phone is the speakers. Now, I was quite shocked to see how loud and how good these speakers are on here. Um, yeah, uh, it was pretty much loud enough to kind of fill up a bedroom or even living room if you're by yourself. I even took this into the shower and the music is able to play louder than the shower actually. The sound was full enough, uh, it wasn't tinning or screeching or anything like that. I found the speakers to be a complete sleeper on this device, I'm not sure uh, if a lot of people are talking about this, but it can play very very good music. The speakers do get very loud and it is pleasant. So This year Samsung is opting for the Exynos 1380 CPU chip which gives us some promising results, which has been very smooth running the adaptive 120Hz on all the supporting apps. There are no stutters and I haven't encountered any lags or app crashing. Swiping through the home screens, uh, you got Samsung the Edge panel and Google Discover menus. Uh, everything is, is smooth as you expect for a phone this price. This model comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM here. From a future proofing perspective, the hardware seems promising. Uh, 8 gigs is already more than enough for a lot of apps and it's gonna have enough power to power through any games that you throw at it. And we all know that Google Chrome, a very RAM heavy app on not only just the computers, but also on the phone. You're gonna be able to have this phone for a long time. I wouldn't even worry about this phone slowing down in two, three years even. Uh, also another thing is Samsung also noted that they're gonna be giving updates to the A54 for the next um, four years of major updates and five years of security updates. Overall, I think the Exynos chip bears well here. I think uh, once you start getting to maybe some video calls and multitasking and whatnot, uh, yeah, you're gonna run into some hiccups, uh, especially once we talk about the camera later in this video. You understand what I mean, that it does take some time switching between the camera modes, but yes, don't expect crazy speeds as advice. Uh, it's just doing what it's supposed to. It's gonna stay and last. It's gonna get you up to speed on today's most modern applications and usage, but yes, it's not gonna be anything 
mind-boggling, super crazy, instantaneously fast as uh, something like the S23 Ultras or the S23 models in general. So you probably heard me talk a lot of good things about this device. Um, one thing that I don't think is too good, I'd say maybe just typical, is the battery life. Especially considering it's a 5,000 milliamp cell. I was expecting, you know, some, some good usage out of this. I think uh, it's a good battery. I don't think they're using the highest quality one on here for some reason. Uh, you know, for example, my daily screen time on this hasn't been past two and a half hours on most days. I found myself plugging this into the charger uh, after every two and a half to three days. So, I mean, I was looking around seven to nine hours uh, on screen time at most. Uh, keep in mind that most of these were actually spent playing games uh, and using social media, scrolling through the web and whatnot. So I was, you know, putting it through its paces. Fast charging on this device has been wonderful as well. I was able to go from zero to hundred uh, in, in under an hour and 22 minutes via just a 20 watt charger so you can power up this phone from dead to alive in just a few minutes and now moving on the camera on this device is surprisingly nice i didn't expect the upgrade to be too noticeable from last year's a53 model but i think the 50 megapixel f1.8 main shooter here really really shines you can see i took some pretty decent pictures and the phone retains sharpness and textures exceptionally well on here if you kind of punch in and zoom into the image a little closer you can see that the level of detail is there uh the colors i do believe look a little flat on here um you know it's not the most exciting the more premium s23 and flagship iphones do a better job at this but if you don't mind editing the colors yourself after i think that's a quick fix now portrait mode does an even better job at isolating subjects out of the photo and the blur looks so so nice to me samsung's imaging software consistently captures great photos while preserving both shadow and highlight details in high contrast scenes recording video on here uh, looks just as brilliant as taking photos i really think the level of detail at this 450 dollars price mark on the phone is insane the stabilization is just as amazing as well shaky footage was handled here naturally uh, the camera system has much improved and I think you're getting a lot. Uh, if you're looking to post some Instagram worthy photos, I think this phone definitely has the capabilities here. Uh, if you're looking at even printing some photos or editing some videos for YouTube or something, the camera system can definitely work. It's not without its faults though, uh, you know, the camera app isn't very fast at all. That's partly due to the Exynos CPU to blame, especially shooting in low light compared to other devices. It can also take a second or two to react when you're trying to multitask, so it can be a little frustrating, not gonna lie. Swiping through the camera modes isn't the fastest as you can tell right here, so just keep that in mind that this phone isn't a powerhouse, it's still a budgeted phone. I mean, as you can see, that kind of took a little while. All in all, the concerns which I addressed here, like the battery, the speed, um, even the weight, uh, looks like I'm kind of bashing the A54, but that's that's not the point here. I really think it makes up in a lot of other departments, like the speakers, the camera quality itself, the display, and the overall build quality of it. Once again, at this price mark, $450, I think this is one of the best phones that you could get. Samsung knows its target audience, they know who this is for. I can see this being the palm of someone who really loves Android phones, that loves Samsung phones, that doesn't need the most, you know, outlandish uh, features and all that. I can also see this being as like a beginner phone for someone who's just starting off, maybe someone for like a kid or something like that, an older relative, just about anyone really. And the fact that this year just looks so similar to the S23, uh, just, you know, just gives me some extra points uh, for this, you know, I'm like, hmm. Um, it, it does look a little bit more and more premium than it actually should, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, if you release this like a few years ago, like 20, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, I, I think, or I confuse this to be like a, a thousand dollar smartphone or something, to be honest with you. So yeah, I mean, that's all I got for the Galaxy A54's review. So if you guys like that, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Comment down below what you think of this, uh, this phone. Tell me what you think. Do you have this? Are you getting it? Do you think that there is another phone around this price point that could probably beat it? I've always been a fan of the Samsung budget phones. The A53, which I reviewed last year, was a terrific, terrific phone. I think this year was a huge, huge upgrade. So yeah, uh, let me know about that. But that's all I have for today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching. And until then, I'll see you soon.